Welcome back, Canaanites, for some canon goodness. After a few weeks of maps and Meridian lore, this week opens with several entries regarding various machines seen during Halo 5's campaign or scattered about on various maps, including the brand new Skirmish at Dark Star. First up is the Brahmin Light Hauler, used to transport supplies and material to a planet or moon's surface. The design of the Brahmin is considered hardy yet nimble, perfect for transportation through treacherous and inhospitable environments. It is designed by the Oros Trading Company. Interestingly, Oros is a Greek word meaning mountain, so appropriate for what they produce. But Brahmin, as far as I can tell, is a Hindu concept relating to the ultimate reality or referring to the Hindu priesthood. Strange choice of term for a transport. Next up is the Komodo Rig, which I'm sure you'll all recognize from Escape from Ark. These are general purpose super heavy trucks. They were used on Meridian by Liang Dortmund to support excavation operations by transporting fuel and power cells across the glasslands. They are made by Traxxas Heavy Industries. If you hadn't guessed, the machine gets its name from the Komodo Dragon. After that, we get the Jotun Aurelis, a utility truck that can be fitted with a variety of specialized tools. On Meridian, the most common attachment was a special purpose glass boring drill. These machines are manufactured by Jotun Heavy Industries. Jotun is of course taken from the old Norse word for giant, but I couldn't find any meaning for Aurelis except in relation to the North American wheel bug. So, yeah. Next is another Jotun product, the EM240 Nada's Heavy Auger. This is a heavy duty mining machine considered unsurpassed in its productivity for colonial resource excavation operations. Utilizing the latest in solid state laser technology, the Nada's excels at yielding higher drilling efficiencies while reducing the risk of operational error. I couldn't find any source on the name Nadas, so if you know, let me know. Finally, we have Forky! I, I mean, the SL4 Traxxas cargo transport. Yeah. I miss driving forklifts. Anyway, the SL4 arrives on the lighter end of the SL range of cargo transports. It's notably more nimble and cheaper cost-wise than the larger S-Line, making it a favorite among businesses of all sizes. After that, we have what was personally the highlight for me, a look at some more ships coming to fleet battles. First up is the ADP-class escort ship. These ships are relics from the Age of Conversion, a period of great enlightenment during which the Covenant brought the truth of the great journey to many species. ADPs provided protection for merchants and pilgrims against not only pirates, but rapacious ministers eager to expand their influence and wealth. Next up, we have a ship that may be familiar to longtime fans, the DSC-class support ship. You may recognize the design from the last voyage of the Infinite Succor. These ships were present in military fleets, but also saw great deployment among expeditionary fleets. Missions that led true believers far from the light of high charity, often taken on faith alone. These ships contain hydroponic pods and hunting grounds. After that, we have the Halberd-class destroyer, a ship we've seen frequently in the fiction. These ships were fast, required only a small crew, and packed quite the punch. It also featured a modular design that allowed for mission-specific configurations. However, as the Covenant War raged and resources waned, the Halberds were often left to escort duty, entire subsystems sometimes left out to reduce cost. Fun fact, it was once said that a single suit of Mjolnir armor cost as much as a destroyer, but this was during the early years of the Covenant War. Finally, we have the Mac platforms, a set I'm personally excited for as it means we're one step closer to a full reenactment of the Battle of Reach. As the article winds down, we get a reminder of the upcoming Firefight beta. If you haven't heard, Warzone Firefight will have an open beta from April 14th through the 18th. I'm so excited, and I hope you are too. After that, we get a small blurb on Killer Instinct. Now interestingly, if both players select the same combat harness in the game, such as Default Classic or Default Ranger, Player 2 will appear with a unique color. The Classic or Supreme Commander Harness gives Player 2 an Elite Miner look. The Storm Harness will give Player 2 the Command Rank Harness, which appears gold. Also, we've now identified a new rank, so that's even cooler. The article closes today with a farewell to Jessica Shea, aka BS Angel, whose last day at 343 was this past Friday. She has been an amazing presence in the Halo community since the days of Bungie, and was a fantastic community leader during her time at 343. She brought me on as a Halo Waypoint monitor a few years back, and was also very responsive on Halo Waypoint and Twitter. Your light was a luminous sun, and we wish you well in all future endeavors. With that, we come to this week's universe entry, the various UNSC frigates. Charon-class light frigates, such as the UNSC Forward Unto Dawn, while not as heavily armed or armored as other frigates, Chief, I'm giving the brutes all I've got, but 
This is a heavyweight fight. Dawn's only got the tonnage to last a few rounds. Find me are capable of carrying a large complement of troops and vehicles. Paris-class heavy frigates such as the UNSC Savannah were deployed in vast numbers during the invasion of Reach in August 2552. Their additional armor and armament made them a real threat to Covenant fleets. Stalwart-class light frigates such as the UNSC and Amberclad were designed with planetary defense in mind. They struck a perfect balance between troop transport and fleet support. Finally, we have the newest addition to the frigate class, the Striding class Heavy Frigate, the rear of which was used as a stand-in for the Forward Unto Dawn in Halo 4. Just to note, however, the canon look of the Dawn is as it appeared in Halo 3. Stridents saw their rise following the end of the Covenant War. These heavy frigates are fast, agile, and have energy shields for additional defense, not to mention their impressive arsenal. The UNSC Infinity carries a complement of 10 Stridents in her underbelly. And that does it for today. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.